well, it's Brian here. I'm pretty excited. Uh, I just got to the Pine Creek tr Pass trailhead. And uh, tomorrow morning, I'm gonna get up at uh, 5 or 3.30 or 4 and get on the trail. Just as that perfect turquoise sky is starting to show itself. And uh, hopefully, summit Mount Julius Caesar, uh, which is about 13,200 feet. There's my tent in the back. I just, this area is pretty great. Uh, there's no real camper people. Uh, it's just adventure people and climbers, so it's pretty sparse with people, which is nice. So people are just pulling over the road, and uh, I pulled off about, I don't know, 500 feet off the road, and I'm gonna camp tonight. It's just perfect. Behind me, there's some pretty dreamy big mountains that you can see. Pretty intimidating. Uh, Mount Julius Caesar is about... Uh, about the same altitude as some of these behind me. I think you can see Bear Creek Spire back there, which is pretty awesome. So I'm really pumped. I've never been in this area. I can't wait. It's going to be a hard day. 20 miles, 5,000 feet of elevation gain. Uh, but I'm going to try to get a good night's sleep and, uh, and be ready for it. Adventure awaits, and uh, I think I'm ready. Well, it's a little past 5 a.m. And uh, I had a good night's sleep last night. It's a really beautiful morning. It's a little warmer than I expected. About 65, so no jacket required. As usual, as soon as I get on the trail, I'm huffing and puffing, but I think that'll go away in a few miles. There's just enough light to where I think I'll turn off my headlamp pretty soon and not be worried about scaring the bears. First stop. Pine Lake. Well, I made it to Pine Lake, uh, which is my first stop. Uh, two and a half hours in, so it feels pretty good. I had dreams of uh, having a nice late breakfast here and uh, having a little cup of coffee, but the place is just infested by mosquitoes. So uh, I'm going to enjoy the beauty, but I'm going to keep moving. Well, I'm at Upper Pine Lake, uh, making good time. I was. Uh, Thinking I was gonna stop here and have a snack too, but mosquitoes are out just trying to eat me to pieces, so I'm just gonna keep moving. I think I'm gonna try to get up above tree line before I have a snack. But uh, yeah, it's just, as you can see, it's absolutely beautiful out there. Just beautiful, uh, aside from the mosquitoes. So many great waterfalls out here. Just one after the other. The mosquitoes are terrible, but the scenery is amazing. Well, I've uh, finally reached a place where I'm not being attacked by mosquitoes. Yeah, I know that's pretty stupid, but uh, my nose started bleeding. I couldn't stop it, so I uh, did what I had to do. A little tired. I've been at it uh, a little over four hours. I think I got about two hours to go to the summit. Uh, I think I'm going to climb out of this box canyon by following this creek and uh, I can't yet see the, the peak or Italy Pass, but uh, I think I probably will in the next half hour or so and uh, I think that will give me the uh, emotional boost I need to keep pushing. In the meantime, it's hard not to appreciate this spectacular place. It's just, it's gonna be onwards. Well, it's exactly 10 a.m. I've been at it for five hours and uh, not making as much progress as I would have hoped. I, I got another 2,000 feet to gain to get to the summit. I think I'll be there by noon. I was hoping to be there by 11, maybe 10.30. It's probably overly ambitious, but uh, if you can see some of these peaks behind me, I finally got to where I'm above the tree line, or almost above the tree line, and uh, there's just some dreamy, dreamy big granite peaks all around me, and uh, it's pretty awesome. So, despite my slight disappointment at my pace, it's a pretty great day. Well, I'm in an area called uh, Granite Park right now. 
which is just a massive talus field. Behind me there's a, there's a really cool frozen lake. And then uh, I think you might be able to see that's uh, Italy Pass. And uh, the mountain to the right of that is uh, Mount Julius Caesar. So I'm gonna get to Italy Pass, take a break. And then uh, I'm gonna get up that mountain. I finally made it to Italy Pass. Wow. 10 miles, 10 hard miles. You know, if you're used to passes like on established trails, Italy Pass is not like that. It's There's no man-made anything about this. It's just a, you know, it's just a low saddle to get to somewhere else. And so you're scrambling over Talus for miles. And uh, 10 miles in, I feel, my body feels like it's done. And, uh, but I still got to summit that. By the way, that's a, that's a false summit behind me. It goes, it goes higher. So, uh, anyways, my body doesn't want to do this at all. I'm done. But, uh, my mind is going to make my body do this. Well, I made it to the summit. This was tough. I, I don't know where I put this on the scale of toughness, but it's definitely a 10 out of 10. It took me eight hours to get here. I am fried. It is beautiful up here. But uh, wow, the scrambling at the end. I turned to climbing and, you know, it's over 13,000 feet. I'm tired already. Anyways, enough of my griping and moaning. I get to be here. So however I feel, I, I get to be here. I don't ever want to take that for granted. This is beautiful. It's beyond words. I wish I could stay here a long time, but uh, I took so long to get here that uh, I probably ought to get back pretty soon. I don't know how long it's going to take me to get down, but it's going to take me a while. There's just a lot of, I don't want to fall in on the way down that would suck uh so anyways uh i'll give you guys a, a panorama here of where i'm at it is pretty incredible let me show you uh, uh. Peak after peak after peak, snow-capped mountains. It's just dreamy, absolutely dreamy. There's Lake Italy down there. Uh, down there is where I came up, so I gotta make my way back down this ridge and then uh, head back there, find the trail again and get back to my car before it gets dark. That's the goal today, so uh, we'll see how this goes. The adventure is not over yet. It's only halfway over, but it's been a pretty good half so far. I'll talk to you on the other side. Well, I made it off the trail and uh, sure felt good to get those boots off and get in the car and uh, I probably burned 8,000 calories and I only ate maybe two and a half. So uh, I had myself uh, a big dinner. I wanted to stay the night uh, around the Bishop area, but there was, uh, it was like 90 degrees and there was a wind advisory and when I put up my rooftop tent, I thought the wind was going to blow me and the tent into oblivion. And uh, so I just decided, oh, the heck with it. I grabbed a Red Bull and drove home and got home about 1 a.m. in the morning. So it uh, feels uh, not a lot of sleep last night, but it feels good to be home again. And uh, it was a pretty great adventure. And I'm, 
I don't want to get out there again tomorrow, but uh, you know, in a couple of weeks, I'll probably forget the pain and want to do something ambitious again. So, uh, you know, in back of me, I'm going to put out, I'm going to put away my gear in all these bends and uh, I have something to remind me of why I do what I do. This is what I call the donut. Uh, this young man at Oak Valley College drew this for me as I was giving a talk. Super talented young man. Anyways, it's, uh, as you can see, the donut comfort zone is in the hole of the donut. Not much is happening there. Adventure zone is where everything awesome in life happens. Outside of the comfort zone. And then, of course, down here is a place that, you know, we're trying to avoid best we can. And uh, hopefully I'll, I'll continue to avoid that. But uh, I want to encourage you. I had a pretty great adventure. What's your adventure? How are you going to get across this little moat into the meat of the donut and live an adventure of your own? I'll leave that thought with you, and I'll see you on my next adventure.